Hi, welcome to Parametric House. In this Rhino Grasshopper tutorial, I wanted to produce a series of random strips between two curves, which is uh, two circles, obviously. And we can control the number of strips. Uh, we can also change the random distribution and control also the minimum and the maximum they can reach. For example, you can see it can reach uh, till the second circle or you can just say half of that uh, or whatever you want. Uh, I'm going to explain also this uh, random uh, domain which is really useful to produce different uh, strips between a uh, surface, a nerve surface. Uh, before we get started remember to subscribe to this channel because we have weekly new tutorials and uh, let's get started from scratch. What I want to do here is let's just delete everything and start with two circles. Uh, so I'm going to uh, draw two circles here. Obviously you can just use Rhino to draw them. So in the Parms menu you can find the curve component here. Uh, I'm going to put that on the canvas. Uh, as you can see we can in import them into Grasshopper. Right click and set multiple curves set the first one is here and the second one is here. The reason I'm choosing this one as the first uh, curve is because when we lock these curves together this is going to be uh, for example the U direction okay and then we can distribute those strips from here till the end. But if you choose the second circle uh, the starting of the U direction is going to be in this way, okay? So it's going to give you different results. Remember to uh, consider that. In the surface menu, uh, you can find the loft tool. Simply connect them together. And as you can see here, if I bake this, uh, we will have a loft surface to here. Uh, if you want to have a better result, uh, you can also go to the loft option and maybe align the sections. And if I bake that, you can see that the surface is going to get better, uh, the UV distribution. So remember that you can also uh, control that in the loft option. Uh, the next part is to, first of all, divide these into U strips. Uh, we're going to go to the surface utility and the isotrim is great for this tool. If you want to know more, we have a complete section on this for the uh, power course members but for now what I want to do is to give the loft surface to the surface input. This is going to extract uh, an isoparametric subset of a surface, right? Uh, we can, I'm going to show you two techniques to use this isotrim to get the final results. First of all, uh, by combining the isotrim with the math domain and divide domain 2, we can extract a part of it based on division of the domains. It's really easy. Uh, first of all, you have to give the surface to the domain. It's going to obviously find the UV domain itself. For example, it's going to be, uh, for example, if this is U, it's going to be from 0 to 33. And if this is V, it doesn't really matter the direction, it's going to be from 0 to 316. Uh, Obviously, it's going to divide this to U and V count. If I give it this to the domain input, because the default is like 10 to 10, uh, you can see the division. But for now, one of the directions is going to be 1. So I'm going to just two forward slashes and 1 to use a panel. And Control X, Control V. Give this to the U count. And obviously, this is what we want. Because if I give it to the V count, you can see it's going to give us these rings. So I'm going to give that to the U count. Now I can uh, say maybe I want them from 12 to 100. This is going to be the number of divisions in the V count. That's exactly the base we need. Uh, after we did that, uh, what we need here is to again use another isotrim to extract a part of these surfaces. For example, this one maybe we just want this isotrim. For the next one we need this one and for the next one till the end, right? Uh, this is again another tool from the math section. The domain is going to be this one. I usually like to use the construct domain too because you have control 
uh, of all the inputs uh, of the U and V uh, distribution. You can see that we have U minimum maximum and V minimum maximum. So if I give it that to the domain. So now, uh, what is U minimum, U maximum, V minimum, V maximum? Okay, first let me just explain this part. Uh, if you right click on the surface, there is a reparameterize tool. And this reparameterize is really important. Uh, what's happening is that if I go to the params menu primitive and connect a domain to to these strips and let's just connect a panel uh, you can see that these strips have different u and v uh, numbers for example if we go to the strip number five maybe this is one that uh, the number five okay it's like u0 to 100 uh, it's from 0 to 33 and for the v it's like 32 to 39 let's zoom in this one is like 32 to 39 and this is really really hard to control all of these strips. So there is a lot, uh, uh, really important technique. What we have to do here is to right click on the surfaces and reparameterize them. We want to actually normalize the, the domains. So all of them is going to be from zero to one and zero to one. So what's happening here is that we have a strip here. The U domain is going to be from zero to one and the v domain is going to be also from 0 to 1 and it's obviously easier to control uh, maybe we want a part of this one for the v domain uh, we want a little bit of a gap and also uh, we want for example to go up here right maybe 0 0.7 that's how we can control the u minimum max v min and v max so remember that you can reparameterize it here or reparameterize it in the input doesn't really matter now we can control uh, the u min u max and v min v max for example the u min is like zero let me just give this a number slider first for the u so you can understand what's happening and then we're going to go to the v uh, if it's the same number it's not going to give you anything okay you can see from zero to one is going to be the complete strips in the u direction so remember that this is the u direction and uh, if we want to start from another part it's uh, actually easy we just have to increase that uh, i'm not going to change the zero we want to start from here but this one is the number we want we have to give a random number to this part the another part is the v min v max which is if i give that to the V, you can see that we are actually extracting if this is the 0 to 1, we are actually giving it a little bit of a gap. Okay, so we can maybe control that if we want to. Uh, let's say that we want to say from 0 0.1 then I'm going to give that to the V max and because we just want a same gap from the start till the end I'm going to say in the V max expression 1 minus X so it's going to be from 0 0.1 to 0 0.9 right this is going to give you a control on the gap so I'm going to just turn this off now you can see that we can give that a little bit of a gap so remember that reparameterize is really essential if you want to uh, control these parts uh, the next thing I want to do here is to control the u max but I want a random number so you can go to the sets and here in the random there's a sequence random I'm going to give it here uh, the range is between 0 and 1 which is obviously we want to if this is the strip and this is the u direction we want from 0 to 1 but the start has to be to 0 right the start was 0 the maximum has to be controlled here okay so uh, for the domain we have to go to the math 
and use this construct domain to make a domain. So I'm going to bring it here and maybe say from, just give a number smaller than one with four decimals so I can control it. Okay, this is going to help us to say that the random has to go maximum to one, right? Because we want to reach at the end. And also, uh, maybe if it's really small, we don't want to be less than 0 0.2. Why? Because maybe we just don't want to have two small uh, strips. So this is also the minimum and the maximum it can reach. Now that we have this range of random numbers, we have to give how many numbers we want. Uh, obviously, we have 48 strips here, and that is this number. So I'm going to give this to the number of random numbers we need. So it's going to give us 48 numbers. Uh, the seed is an engine, so you can give it any number from 1 to, I don't know, 10,000. 1, 2 decimals. 10, 10,000. Uh, the reason here is that by changing the seed, let me show you here. By changing the seed, you can see that we can get new distribution of random numbers. Now we can give that to the U max and we are set to change the engine. And also, this is the maximum we can control. The one is some of them is going to maybe get to the maximum of the reach. And this one is obviously if you give it zero, we will have a chance it's going to be really small. So I'm not going to give that small numbers. OK, that's it for this tutorial. You can use this tool simply to uh, use a surface. If you want to do that, we can simply just say we have a surface and we want this distribution. So if I just delete this loft and curve and for example, let's draw a rectangle, rectangular surface, give it to the input. You can see that we can uh, produce these strips. If I want to swap the UV direction, I can simply go to the analyze direction and swap the UV. It's going to be in this direction. Uh, we can use SOL to get the control points. I'm going to select this point and with the shift key this point, scale it a little bit. Again, you can see it's swapped. So I'm going to swap the UV direction. Again, I can reverse U and turn this off, okay? Now I can produce random strips on this one. This is really good if you want to design maybe uh, something at the roof. Uh, for example, if I bring this a little bit up and I also want to draw a rectangle here a vertical one. Yeah, maybe this is a wall and we want to produce a series of random strips on both of them. So I have to select multiple surfaces. Then I have to graft it because we have two a set of inputs. And now we have to play with this swap UV direction, swap UV. Yeah, that's good. Now, if I turn this off, you can see that we have this completely nice outputs. Maybe it's a corner of a wall. Let's just turn this and control shift to move this edge a little bit back. Again, a swap UV direction will do that. The view reverse. Yep, that's it. Let's just turn this off. That's it. Uh, we can increase or decrease the gap if we want to. If you want two randoms for the top and the bottom, I can, I'm going to give two with the shift key to the seed. And remember that this one is going to control the first surface and the second surface. So you have 
different distributions. That's also cool. And finally, you can just bake that, uh, join them together and offset the surface. Maybe we want a solid. I don't know if this number is good. Let's just increase the distance to one. That's it. And bring them to zero. And we will have this in our project. Okay, that's it. I just wanted to give you and share with you this algorithm, which you can simply use two times the isotrim uh, to produce the final results. Uh, thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe and like this video so it can reach more people. Uh, try doing this from scratch in Grasshopper and if you run into any problems, just let us know. Uh, thanks for watching. Have a great time. Bye.